A Three Hat Day by Laura Geringer. Pictures by Arnold Lobel. Read by Ben Hobbes. R. R. Pottle the Third loved hats. He loved fur hats and firemen's helmets and felt hats with feathers tucked in the bands. He loved top hats and tiny hats. He loved silk hats and straw hats and sailor hats. He loved berets and bonnets and bathing caps and bowlers. R. R. Pottle was the last of a long line of Pottles. Father collected canes. Mother liked umbrellas. Together, they took long walks in the rain. After a happy life together, mother and father died. R. R. lived by himself in the Pottle Mansion. He was rather lonely. He dreamed of meeting his future wife in the rain. After he dreamed she would be wearing the perfect hat. Every morning, when R. R. woke, the first thing he did, before he polished his glasses, before he combed his mustache and his few strands of hair, even before he yawned, was choose a hat. Sometimes, when he was feeling sad, he chose two and wore them, one on top of the other. One bright, clear morning, R. R. felt so sad he wore three hats. Marching down the street, he passed two snakes out for a sunny stroll beneath a ginkgo tree. R. R. noticed a cloud hovering just above his head. He passed two bluebirds doing a fancy waltz in midair. R. R. trudged on. The cloud grew bigger and darker. He passed two frogs in a pond, singing a tender duet. R. R. recognized the tune. It was Estrelita Be Mine, the love song. R. R.'s shoulders drooped. He heard thunder in the distance. There was only one thing left to do on such a glum day. With a sigh of relief, he glided through the revolving doors of the largest hat store in town. What hats! There were fezes and face veils, tiaras and tam o' shanters. There were sombreros and skull caps, pill boxes and panamas. There were beanies with propellers. There were derbies with green glitter that glowed in the dark, and much more. R.R. began to zigzag in and out among the hats. His spirits rose. He tried on the fez and twirled his mustache. He tried on the derby and struck a devil-may-care pose. He tried on the sombrero and did a little jig. The pom-poms hit his nose. What are you doing? A sharp voice rang out. R.R. was doing a pirouette. An angry saleswoman pointed at him, scowling. Stop that, she said. R.R. blinked and shook his head. He thought he hadn't heard right. It was clear she didn't like him, but why? R.R. took off the sombrero, slipped it back on the shelf, and backed away. Tears came to his eyes. He turned to leave. Just then, a round figure rushed out from behind a curtain. She wore a dress that hung like an apple sack, a lopsided apron, and squeaky shoes. When she saw R.R., she smiled. It was the sweetest smile he had ever seen, and above the smile was a hat. A perfect hat. On one side, a sequin seal balanced a shining ball on the tip of its nose. On the other, tiny gold bells jangled, and a plume as soft and gray as fog graced the peak. Oh, Isabel, the cross one said, that little man is messing up our hats. Look, he's wearing three, one on top of the other. Little man, thought R.R., squaring his shoulders. But Isabel was still smiling broadly at him. Why, Ida, she said, we don't sell sailor hats. She stepped up to R.R. and gently took off his sailor hat. And Ida, she said, we don't sell firemen's helmets. And gently she took off his helmet. And Ida, dear, we don't sell bathing caps either. And gently, gently, she took off R.R.'s bathing cap. It's clear, said Isabel, balancing on her toes, that this man is no messer upper of hats. It's very clear, said she, balancing R.R.'s three hats in her arms, that this man is a lover of hats, and she beamed. R.R. took off his glasses and polished them with his handkerchief. He cleared his throat. <laughs> Shall we go for a walk? he asked softly. It's raining, I believe. And he held out his hand. Yes, said Isabel, taking it. They passed a pond where two frogs sat doing a duet. 
Isabel recognized the tune. It was, Love, is that you? R.R. and Isabel hummed along as they danced along the road. And so, Isabel and R.R. Pottle the Third lived ever after in the Pottle Mansion, where R.R. Pottle the Fourth was born. R.R. Pottle the Fourth did not like hats. She did not like umbrellas, and canes left her cold. R.R. Pottle the Fourth loved shoes. The end.